Definitely your thoughts and phone calls on this program as well. So we'll bring the elder in to uh, discuss uh, issues like what we talked about last week, Sabbath breakers and a few other things. So welcome to your phone call, 770-559-2999. That's 770-559-2999. Without further ado, let's uh, bring in the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, Yaakov Ben Israel. Shalom, Shalom my brother. Shalom, how are you? Oh, pretty good, thank you. You know, we talked about this uh, Sabbath breakers and the significance of the Sabbath day, why uh, people uh, choose to observe uh, or to go to their worship center on Sunday as opposed to a day that has been, and, and especially for those who, who say they um, read the scriptures and, and abide by the things that uh, the Most High has commanded. Uh, why they choose to go to uh, their worship center on uh, on Sunday or the first day of the week as we know it. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and we also talked a little bit about uh, who, the history of the Sabbath day in terms of it being a covenant made with the children of Israel mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So, uh, but still there are those who watched that program last week that went to church Sunday morning of or Sunday evening or whenever they go and Sunday still is their high day mm -hmm. uh, the day of the sun the Holy Empress Day that that particular day that first day of the week people still went to their worship centers on uh, on the first day of the week mm -hmm. uh, how do we explain or how do you explain this this uh, delusion of sorts that uh, we are we seem to be under that we can read truth and then say, well, I'm still going to abide by the traditions of my fathers. Well, what I, what I, uh, uh, that's a lack of knowledge. That comes from lack of knowledge. That's what it comes from, lack of knowledge. See, most of the people that go to church on Sunday and don't keep God's law do it because they haven't read the whole story. Hmm. See, if they read the whole story instead of part of the story, they'll see that Yahweh meant exactly what he said. Show you what I mean. The first thing that Yahweh blessed and set aside and sanctified was the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. He rested. Mm -hmm. So the holy days that he gave us was not for us. These were his days. This is why in Leviticus 23rd chapter he said, these are my feasts when he talked about the feast of the Lord. And the first feast that he mentioned was the Sabbath. Mm. You see, he says six days shall work be done, but the Sabbath is the Sabbath of rest. So most people say, well, it don't make any difference which right. day it was. Right. It did make a difference because he worked the first day, the second <laughs> day, the third day, right. the fourth day, the fifth day, right. sixth day, and he rested the Seventh day. And when the Europeans changed the calendar, the only thing they did was gave each one of the days a name instead of a number. Like the Bible tells us that the Messiah rose on the first day of the week. So what the Europeans did, seeing that they were always already keeping Sunday as their day, they disregarded what he, we had to say. But when you check in the New Testament, Paul had a habit of going into the synagogue on the Sabbath day sitting down to read. The Messiah as his custom was, went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down to read. I'll show you why. It's a piece of scripture here in Exodus 31 mm -hmm. and verse 12. It says, And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak you also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I, Yahweh, I am Yahweh that do sanctify you. Mm -hmm. You shall keep my Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiled it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off among his people. Six days may work be done, but the seventh day, the Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahweh, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation for a perpetual covenant. Mm -hmm. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made the heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Mm -hmm. So uh, this thing was given to us. He said, you shall know them because they keep my Sabbaths, mm -hmm. not the Sabbath that man has set up. So what man has got off into the process of doing is following the ways of the adversary. Okay. What better way uh, could Satan get a hold of people than to tell them, say, well, look, see right here, Paul say you're not under the law, you're under grace. What law? Right. 
What now? Mm -hmm. When John saw the Messiah come, he said, Behold the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the earth, the sins of the past. Mm -hmm. But everything you do uh, from then uh, on, there's going to be a fiery day of judgment which shall divide Yahweh's adversary. And when you read in St. Luke 4, chapter, mm -hmm. St. Luke 4, and pick it up at verse 13 through verse 16, the Messiah himself said, Heaven and earth shall pass away. Right. He didn't say it might. He said it shall pass away, but not one joke. A one tittle of the law until all be fulfilled. But see, man don't want to deal with what the Messiah had to say. He right. don't want to deal with the word of God. This is why they went into the New Testament and said, well, okay, let's deal with these letters that Paul and the apostles wrote to the church. Let's not go back there and deal with that old. But if you never lay a foundation, you can be taught a new religion each day. That's why they got so many different denominations. Well, you know, last week David uh, guys read uh, something out of Isaiah 58 and 13 that mm -hmm. said basically uh, you shouldn't do your own pleasure. Mm -hmm. Speak your own words and do all your own things mm -hmm. on the Lord's holy day, mm -hmm. or on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So it's principally that's the, the great significance of the Sabbath day, that you are minding the things of the Most High as opposed to your own. your own thing. It's one day it was giving you the rest from your labors, in other words, your vanity. Okay. The things you do of your vanity. <laughs> uh, 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 it was given, this day was giving you the rest from there. And when you check back into the Holy Story and read the story, our people came to the, to the temple on the Sabbath day mm -hmm. and they were there all day long. You know why? This was the day that they came and, uh, to hear the priest read out of the law and the prophets so they can keep these things fresh in their mind, mm -hmm. you see. So in other words, it was a day that they went to the synagogue to renew their spirit because they knew that the spirit was there because Yahweh himself and the angel uh, uh, were commanded to do the same thing. So mm -hmm. uh, people walked in holiness uh, uh, before uh, 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 Yahweh and kept his law. But what happened was the Europeans decided once we went and taught them and the Europeans kill off the apostles, okay. then what they did was they took, o took it over and they decided what they were going to do is they was going to honor the angel of the sun who is Satan. Mm -hmm. So therefore, mm -hmm. they start keeping, uh, first they call it Holy Emperor's Day, right. nice right. way to put it, right. Holy Emperor's Day, and then they finally, they changed it and made a decree that Sunday would be their day of worship because their exact words was this, we don't want to, uh, 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 we don't want to, 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 to conform with the robbers of the Jews. Right. So they didn't want to keep what we were keeping. So what they were in the process of doing was taking over the religion and setting them up a religion. And the religion that they set up, you know, when Rome fell in 476 AD, they called it the Dark Ages because nobody got anything from the church. But what, this gave the church a time to hatch out this junk that they feeding in the street today. And once they got that hatched, hatched out, then the Roman Catholic Church came out singing like a whore, mm -hmm. and she gave us Sunday, Christmas, and Easter, mm -hmm. right? And Good Friday, right? Mm -hmm. These were days that man instituted. And even today, we'll go and keep these days uh, uh, and, 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 and deal with the paganism that's around. And that's what it is. Right. We know that, that Easter and Christmas and all that is involved around a whole lot of paganism. We'll go and we'll keep those days diligently. As a matter of fact, I was coming down the street last night, and here it is. It's not even what they call that pagan day they call Thanksgiving yet. And people have got their trees lit up. They got lights all around the house, and it hasn't even come yet. It shows you how deep-seated this, right. this paganism is. But then when you look at all the zodiac signs and and all the, uh, the, the soothsayers we got, we call them psychics. Right. Uh, when you look at all these things, you can very well see that, look at the names of the days of the weeks, the months, the planets. You can very well see that what the Europeans did was this. They just, Satan just used them to incorporate all of his things into a religion, you see. And the Bible don't even teach, uh, what I don't understand is this. How can a man be taught religion out of a Bible that doesn't teach religion, that teach history? But see, mm. that come from, like I said, like Yahweh said. And the history of one people. Right. right. Yahweh said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And what we do is when you look at the various religions our people practice, uh, if they would go and look them up in the encyclopedia, they'll find out, find out these, people, these religions are new kids on the block. Right. They were started recently <laughs> because of some European group dividing with another European group and another European group divided from that group while they still had us in captivity. We didn't have nothing to do with these things, mm. you see. But then once we began, to, once we was in this captivity, 
We wanted to kind of get this pressure up off us and be like master. So what we did was we start uh, 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 dealing with his religion. Like I asked a brother uh, one week, I said, man, why are you a Baptist? He told me John was a Baptist. Right. I said, John was a Jew. His title was baptizer. Right. He was the one that came that prepared the way for the Messiah to baptize. That was his only job, mm -hmm. was to prepare the way for the Messiah and baptize the Messiah. After that, the Messiah himself said uh, 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 that John was going to uh, decrease, just like he had to increase, you see. Mm -hmm. So now it left from John, if they wanted to deal about, be a becoming a Baptist, right. then it came into the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And truly, the Messiah was king of the Jews. You know, uh, speaking of the paganism that you spoke about, uh, the Christmas and Easter and so forth, that was featured on the news this morning, this guy who had uh, been picking out the, the tree that goes up on top of riches on the downtown buildings. Mm -hmm. This guy had been picking the tree for, since 1960. Mm -hmm. And now, I remember times when that crowd at downtown, when it really began to really swell mm -hmm. in terms of people going down to see a tree lit up. Mm -hmm. But many people say, we don't worship the tree. Even today, folks will say, we don't worship the tree. The tree is just a symbol. A symbol of what? Right. A symbol of what? Right. What does all, see, our people get off into the tree. But they don't go further with the year log and all that stuff. See, don't, they don't deal with these things. They don't, they don't understand that this is tied up into a bunch of paganism. So let me read you some scripture here out of Jeremiah 10 chapter mm -hmm. and see what Yahweh told our people. Jeremiah 10 in verse 1, it says, Hear ye the word which Yahweh speak unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, Learn not the ways of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed after them. Look at the signs they celebrate their days on. Easter, the spring equinox, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. Then they uh, deal with Christmas, the winter solstice, signs in the heavens, yeah. right? So they say, like this comet get ready to come through. Everybody, right. oh, the comet going to do this. Ain't nothing but the little grains are saying they going to do too much. But anyways, uh, verse 3, it says, For the custom of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, mm -hmm. the work of the hands of, uh, uh, of the workmen, Since with an axe, right? <laughs> right, now these are the men of solstice, right? Man, right? <laughs> they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but they speak not. They must needs be born. Now, why is he talking about they don't speak? Because these things was worshipped at one time, right. right? By the European. Because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is there any good uh, in, in them doing any good. But consider this. The girl in the woods are cut out of the tree to bring them into town. They got little cups. We don't bang them down right. on the floor with right. nails now. They got little cups, little dainty little things. They put the cup in the tree in it, put some water in it so it won't dry out. And they don't decorate it with gold and silver per se. What they use is effigies. They use little golden balls and little angels and all these junk that Yahweh told us not to be not to deal with. Right. They show us angels with wings on the back and so forth. I've never seen an angel with a wing right. on the back. I've never read about an angel with a wing on his back. But see, this is what we get from the nations because the nations are still off into worshiping Satan. And anything, and you got to understand that it's not the nations that Satan is making war with. He is using them as a strap against us. So what he does is this. He give the nations this power and then what we do, being foolish, we just follow. Right. Right. We follow. We just provoke us to jealousy. Right. I remember a story once. <laughs> a friend of mine, an uh, older fella, uh, he's about, he was about 20 years older than I was. He worked at Piggly Wiggly all his years, all his life. Right. So when he got to retire, he, he retired and a little shack right across the street. So he went across there, and the next day he opened up a, a store and said, Piggly Wiggly. Right. So they came over and told him, said, well, look, John, you can't name your store Piggly Wiggly. It's a registered name. It's a trademark. You know? right. So he said, he said, okay, boss, man. So the next day he opened up, he had a sign up said, Hoggly Woggly. <laughs> Assimilating. <laughs> Yeah. what the nations have done. And this is what we've done all of our lives, see. <laughs> Yahweh gave it to us to teach them, yeah. and he told us, now if you don't do it, I'm going to put you in captivity under all these nations. Yeah. Aren't we in captivity? Right. Under the same nation that's ruled in there? Well, it's simply because we didn't teach them like <laughs> we were supposed to. What we did was we allowed them to teach us by uh, uh, wanting to be like master. You know, hardly uh, uh, wargly that, that would get me. Uh, the uh, 
<laughs> um, we're talking about the uh, the Christmas tree. People watching the show tonight. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 10, that was that you read. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 10, 135. Now, people got the scripture. Mm -hmm. Watching the program. They hear it. They're reading it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Come next week. They had a tree. But downtown? They're going to be down, either downtown or either they're going to go by the tree. Well, look, 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 let me show you another All thing. All you Right. <laughs> i show you another thing they do. Look, now, Yahweh told our people, we just read it in church last week, that Yahweh told our people that the month of Abib, which fall between March and April, mm -hmm. was the beginning of the year, right? Yeah. Now, December 31st at 12 o'clock midnight, Turn on your TV and look at the people right. from all over the United States celebrating Janus, a two-faced God that looks into the past and into the future. But now they say, oh, that's not what we celebrate. Right. These, the revolutions and all that stuff they go through, these are rituals, if they go back and read it, these were rituals that was around, that involved that pagan God. Right. You see, right. and we have them today, and people say, well, it's all right. No, it's not all right, mm -hmm. because Yahweh gave a certain way for us to live. He said, you shall be a holy people unto me. Mm -hmm. In other words, the law, he told us, this is your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding among the nations. Right. Well, now you can see why we're in the position that we're in, don't you? Mm -hmm. Now you can see why there is not a lot of uh, 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 wise and understanding people that's among our people that's in the governmental structure. Right. You know why? Simply because they don't keep the laws of God. Right. Because it's the laws of God that causes us to prosper in the land. When we don't keep it, we, we don't prosper. But when we do, we prosper. And that and that and that's what add validity to the law. Mm -hmm. You know, speak especially the law you know, I, I want you to ask I, I want to ask you this one. The uh, this brother said that the law of Moses and the law of God is different laws. Well, I'll agree to him to in a certain to in one aspect. See, Yahweh did not issue the law pertaining to divorcement. Mm -hmm. See, when Yahweh brought Adam to Eve, I mean Eve to Adam, he gave her to the woman because she had he had she had been taken from with inside him. See, man was made from the elements, from the dust of the right, earth. He was right. formed. But what he did was he took the woman from the man, from flesh, and made that man a uh, woman and brought her and gave her to the man. And he said, This is not bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because uh, she was taken out of man. And for this cause, a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and the twain shall right. become one flesh. Right. Well, marriage was a thing that uh, it, it was permanent. It's perm I mean, it's a permanent fixture. Right. Uh, the only reason that was given for you to get a divorce was that you had to actually catch your wife in the act of adultery. And that's pretty hard to do. Mm -hmm. But if she got caught, uh, you didn't have to worry about no divorce because according to the law, they took her out and stoned her with stone right. and made a rock pile out right. of her, you see. Right. So, uh, uh, what well, y'all we had intended marriage to be forever, but see, what the Europeans did was this. The Europeans said, well, look, if you don't get along, we'll get rid of her. Right. So, they permitted us uh, uh, people to marry this month and 30 days later, go get a divorce. So we are incompatible. But the only way that you could uh, divorce your wife, it had to be for the act of adultery. You she know, had to be caught. I, I think what the brother was misunderstanding, what he was trying to say was the two tables mm -hmm. was different from what Moses gave, even if it was really just kind of bizarre. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the Ten, the, the ten Commandments that was given, mm -hmm. given, Moses had to expound upon those things and give people understanding. So what he's saying is, well, whatever Moses expounded was Moses' thing. It was different from the Ten Commandments. Well, most, well most people don't understand that the Ten Words or the Ten Commandments, that is the law. But see, they had to, it had to be explained. Like, right. like uh, say, for instance, the, the, law, the law says you should do no murder. They said thou should not kill. They said you should do no murder. But see, now, according to the law, uh, there were stipulations given as to how that you could kill a man. Mm. So there was laws, statutes, and there was judgment uh, uh, pertaining to uh, each one of the Ten Commandments that, that, that was given. This is why the law spread out into 613 right. laws, right. statutes, and judgment. He couldn't just say, thou should not kill. 
Well, there has to be, if we, even in the court system today, mm -hmm. they have different degrees of merit. Statutes, right. Statutes right. and right. judgments right. to go right down, right. you see. If you do it this kind of way, then you can't be fried or you can't be uh, 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 hung or whatever, right. whatever punishment they use. But if you do it this way, then you can. Right. Well, see, Yahweh set up things the same way. Mm -hmm. He gave us the law, then he told us, gave us statutes and judgments pertaining to it. And the only law that Moses gave was when he told them about that divorcement. Right. Because every time that you read where Moshe said anything pertaining to how we should conduct ourselves, it says, and Yahweh spoke unto Moshe saying. Right. Right. See, so what people try to do is discredit a lot of Trying things. To out of right, but law. you cannot rig wiggle out of it because it's going to be a day of judgment one day. And what you're going to be judged by is not the color of your hair, not who you gave some money to once or twice. And you're going to be judged by the Ten Commandments, the laws and the statutes, and then the judgments will follow. And when you look at the judgments, all of the judgments end up saying the wages of sin is death. Right. You know, what's, what's in, in a simple way of, uh, of understanding as well is, you look at the Constitution, it's the supreme law of the land. Mm -hmm. But the state, the federal, uh, uh, you got federal law, state law, county law, mm -hmm. folks got law in their house. Mm -hmm. But even when there's a, a violation of a law, if it to be bound over, mm -hmm. it can go all the way to the Supreme Court. And then they got to interpret that Constitution. Right. See, they say, well, uh, stealing is against the law. Right. Okay, so you can steal something, and it depends on the kind of the time of day that you broke in, that you stole it. You know, mm -hmm. if, especially when it's breaking in somebody's house, it can, it depends on the, the time of day that you did it, mm -hmm. whether anyone was home or not. Right. You know, so it, there, there are different laws and judgments depending on the danger that you put people in when you deal with this unrighteousness. Well, let's go to the uh, round road report. Be right back. Let the uh, uh, audience know uh, we uh, also this program airs li uh, rerun on tomorrow night at 8 p.m. So if you uh, miss us tonight, you can catch us uh, tomorrow. Also, it runs in the city of Atlanta on People TV at 2:30, and also we have another program that runs in the city of Atlanta on People TV. Uh, signs up the times in depth, and it's just a more intimate kind of program. One, it's a kind of library atmosphere whereby we uh, invite the city of Atlanta residents in to deal with the live uh, uh, program. So if your family is in the city of Atlanta, tell them to tune in uh, Monday nights at 9.30. Um, and I think we have a call, but Ed, I wanted, before we go to the call, the deal that's going down over in, uh, in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Saddam Hussein waiting to the, supposedly the last half hour before he say, okay, Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and uh, compromise, and you can let your people come back and inspect my property, my, mm -hmm. my weaponry, uh, or my ability to make uh, weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, will there ever be a calm in that area? And, and is it right for uh, America to initiate being global cop? Have they been given just a carte blanche um, uh, to, to, to assert themselves in the role of global cop? Well, well, let's look at the issue with Saddam Hussein, and then, you know, people can basically judge themselves. Saddam Hussein used to be, before he got in power in Iraq, Saddam Hussein was on America's payroll. He was on the CIA payroll. Mm. Now, once they set him up in power as a, a stepping stone in that, for America in that Middle East, things kind of backfired for, for him because of the pressure that was put on him by the Islamic world, you see. So what they're afraid of now is uh, 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 it, it, it's some, it's some prophecies that's, being, uh, that's going to be fulfilled. As a matter of fact, uh, the president said the other night uh, that the biggest threat of the year to, uh, uh, of 2000 will be germ and chemical warfare. Mm -hmm. The biggest threat. And you can very well see uh, how that can work because you can take uh, something like anthrax right. and drive over a city with it and release that vi uh, those germs into the air and within a week everybody in town will be dead. Mm. You see? And people won't even know 
how, how it came, it, but it did drop a bomb, that's something people say, okay, they dropped a bomb, destroyed all this, but that anthrax and so forth, uh, 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 those different diseases that they got coming up that man has cultured in laboratories, you can very well see that these are the things that man planned to use to exterminate not just a few people, but whole nations of people, and, and it's no doubt, I, I can understand the United States fear. See, look at the Tuskegee experiment. Right. Look at the Agent Orange and different stuff that they've put in other people, countries and so forth and so on. You know, the different, uh, back in the war they used mustard gas and so forth, you know. So we can very well see, America knows the effect of these things because they used it. They were the first ones to use it. They got it from the Germans. They were the first ones to use it. So naturally, they see the results of these things and they are afraid uh, that, that these are, uh, 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 things would get into the wrong hands and, and some nut uh, come in to New York City and walk down the street and release a million cells of, uh, 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 of anthrax that will uh, uh, just about destroy uh, uh, at least 40% of the people in the city. You know, so they, I can understand why they are concerned with, uh, with Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein, uh, he's been coming up, uh, like you said, and forcing America to spend a lot of money. And America's getting tired of it, see. And uh, Great Britain said tonight, say, look, we are behind America in this because mm. Saddam has to get out of power. He controlled too many doomsday weapons. So they want him out of power and put a regime in there that, see, if well, it starts, right, see, mm. if it starts, basically where it's going to start at is either in the United States or in Iraq once they start with these, uh, with these chemicals and so forth. Can you imagine if they start uh, uh, a chemical war, a German chemical warfare in that Middle East before it get to Europe? The Europeans gonna stop it at Constantinople, we know that, right. but just like they did the Arabs each time they made their sweep of the Middle East. They're gonna stop it, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna let millions of Arabs die off simply because they're Antichrist. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, was, I heard coming to the station tonight uh, and it's all rumored, supposedly, but somebody released a report that the Israelis are, are manufacturing some type of chemical to deal with the in German warfare. Uh, highlighted, I mean, it's highlighted here. The Israelis are fo putting together some type of uh, chemical or something that would affect the genes of just Iraqis. Mm -hmm. Now, how they're going to be able to do that, that's kind of interesting. But it was, uh, it's a, some report floating around that that's uh, rumored as to something that's uh, they're forming. Well, they might tell people that it's just going to affect the Iraqis, but that's like re 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 releasing a virus here in America and say it's going gonna, it's gonna to only affect the Germans. Or four know, years old. Right, or four years old or something right. like that. We can understand them dealing with certain chemicals that will separate the elderly from the younger because of the changes in, in the body uh, uh, at certain ages, you know, how the metabolism and so forth slow down. I can understand that. But as far as it's just going to uh, affect Iraqis, what they're telling me is that if somebody come out of, of, of Iran and go into Iraq, he won't be affected. I don't believe that. Yeah, because a lot of people saying that they are Iraqi Jews, so that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, one last thing before we go to the phones. Uh, Iraq used to be Babylon. Old ancient uh, Babylon. Old ancient Babylon. Old ancient Babylon. But see, to keep you from getting it confused with the new Babylon, uh, if you notice, when the new Babylon came up on the scene, she came up on the scene in full power of church and state, and she ruled the earth. Mm. You see, and she caused all small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a name, number, and mark. But Iraq is old, ancient uh, 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 Babylon. Mm -hmm. See, uh, this is where the first empire, once we got into our land, if we came out of Egypt, once we got into our land, the first empire that Yahweh brought into our land was, was the, uh, uh, the people out of Iraq, the, the Arabs, the Shemites came into our land. Nebuchadnezzar was a Shemite. Mm -hmm. So they came into our land, and then they lasted until uh, uh, 539 when Yahweh brought the Medes and the Persians in there and took over from the Babylonian empire, and he destroyed the Babylonian empire, and the Babylonian empire hasn't been a major threat to the world since. So they're just trying to keep Saddam Hussein head down, you know, they're trying to make sure, but this is old ancient Babylon, see what he's doing? We gotta, see, we gotta keep our hand on them. But see, that's the deception, the de uh, because Babylon, that Revelations talk about, 
is this one world order that's being set up in Europe. Let's go to the phones. Call the go ahead, state your name, and we're at 770-559-2999. That's 770-559-2999. Call the go ahead, state your name. Uh, yes, my name is Deborah. Yes. Yes, my question is, and first of all, I'd like to read um, a scripture. I'm reading 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, just um, a minute, dear. Verse. Just a minute, dear. If you're going to read scripture, you have to read from Genesis to Malachi. The New Testament is not scripture. The New Testament is letters that was written to people. And if you will, if you can just kind of give us, since we're on the Let's television and the uh, time, uh, give us the summary of what you, the meat of what you're talking about, and then we can kind of go from there. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my question is concerning head covering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. In 1 Corinthians 11, it said, um, fourth verse, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, mm -hmm. dishonoreth his head. Mm -hmm. Okay. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. Mm -hmm. So your question being? My question being is, why do you all read the Bible with your head covered? Good. Thank you for your call. Good question. Thank you. Good question. Number one, I'm not praying and I'm not prophesying. I'm reading what a prophet said, and I haven't prayed yet. Uh, 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 let me, uh, when you get off into, let me read you some scripture pertaining to that head covering so you'll understand where I'm coming from with that, my sister. It's in the book of Ezekiel. It's in Ezekiel 40, I think it's Ezekiel 44. Uh, Okay, Ezekiel 44 and verse 15. Now, we're talking about in the first resurrection when the Messiah set up his kingdom. Now, this thing here goes back to when our, our people came out of Egypt. Yahweh commanded that uh, some clothes be made for the priest. And in these clothes was also a bonnet that they had to wear, right? And Moses told them, say, don't uncover your head, lest she die, right? Okay, now, let's go. Three, uh, uh, 5,000 years later, well, 4,000 years later, into the millennial kingdom that the Messiah is going to set up and pick up what he had to say about the same priest, right? Okay, it's in Ezekiel 44 and verse 15. It says, But the priest, the Levites, the son of Zodok, that keep the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near unto me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat, the blood, said uh, Adonai Elohim. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter the gates, of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them while they minister unto the gates of the inner court and within. And they shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. So we can very well see that the same thing that he told the priest 5,000 years ago, well, 4,500 years ago, is taking place even after the Messiah set up his kingdom. That these are going to, now, uh, we're not, if I got ready to pray, I got, at the, at the Spirit of the Lord gave me something to say that was a prophecy that had to come to pass, uh, I'm going to remove my hat and do that. When we are in church and we prepare to pray, or when I go to pray, I remove my hat when I pray. But the things that I talk about on this show here, I'm not praying and I'm not prophesying. Right. What I'm doing is this. I'm reading to you what a prophet said. Right. Now, if I say, well, thus says Yahweh, that means I'm prophesying, right? So I'm taking my head off my head. Right. And that's what the prophets did. They yeah, said, that's what the prophets did. You prophet know, it's interesting. A, a brother asked me once, say, uh, why do you all wear hats? And, mm -hmm. I, and I said, you know, just, I said, let me think about it. I said, but just for curiosity to say, What's the name of the God of Israel? Mm -hmm. And gave me Lord, all kind of titles, but never gave me a name. So here's something as significant as the God that you pray to. What's the name of your God? Because all gods have names, but mm -hmm. we know that there's a name for the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Something as significant as that, couldn't answer that, but then say, well, why you wear hats? Just doesn't fit in the same bowl. Let's go back to the phones. Call the go ahead. State your name, please. Good evening, brother. My name is David. How you doing? Doing uh, fine, David. And David, let me just mention, we've been talking a little bit about the uh, Sabbath breakers and the validity of the law. Uh, we've talked about a few things. So uh, 
if we can kind of keep our comments uh, centered around that uh, yes, those sir. issues, yes, I'd appreciate sir. it. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Uh, I went to church Sunday, and mm -hmm. uh, I was sitting there listening to the pastor, and he was telling us about Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And what I've been taught over the years since I've been grown and found out that the pilgrims killed the Indians once they brought them over here mm -hmm. and said, come and take bread with me and mm -hmm. stop with me. Okay. Well, if the pilgrims killed the Indians, why are we in church in the house of God worshiping a, a, a day that don't belong and a day that was committed for murder? Well, Good question. Thank you for your call. Well, my brother, you have to go. What you need to do is go do some research on Thanksgiving and give it to your minister. See, most of our people think that Thanksgiving is an American tradition. It's an American holiday, but it's not. The Germans keep it. They keep it in France. It's many countries in the world that, that, that was keeping uh, 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 Thanksgiving even before the United States came over and murdered off the Indians. You see, so uh, Thanksgiving, you, what, what you do, my brothers, do some research on, on Thanksgiving and then go present that information to your preacher and see what happened and then ask him, say, now, what are you going to say about Thanksgiving between now and Thanksgiving? And see what he come up with. Mm. Let's go back to the phones. Caller, go ahead, state your name, please. Caller, are you there? Uh, hello? Yes, sir, go ahead, state your name. Yeah, I was wondering, like, I see people talk about uh, Jews, and they got two or three different races of Jews. Is it, a, is it a race or a religion? Good question. Thank you. The Jews was one tribe of people. The Jews were the tribe of Benjamin, and according to the Bible, these people were black. The people that took over. Judah. Huh? I tried to tribe of Judah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the people that took over as the Jews, uh, that began to be called the Jews in the third century AD, these were the people that was in Jerusalem that were called Herodians that we had basically converted to our religion. Judaism is a culture. Judaism is a part of a culture. Now, what happened was it wasn't the one tribe that was called Jews. Mm -hmm. But then once the Roman, the Europeans came in, regards to what your pedigree was, what your tribe was, they call you a Jew. You see, it's just like when they brought us over here as slaves, you know. Uh, 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 they say, well, all of y'all came, the lie they told us was that all of y'all came from different tribes, right? Well, why did they call us all niggas? Right. You see, I know all the tribes wasn't called that, you see, so <laughs> it's the same thing uh, with the Jews. The Jews are impost imposters. As a matter of fact, what you need to do is read uh, uh, Ezekiel uh, 38, and then go back and read uh, uh, the book of Obadiah, and you're going to find out that Jacob's brother Esau called himself getting his birthright back, mm -hmm. and they were put in place by the, Europe, uh, by the United States and Great Britain in 1948. See, but according to the Bible, according to the Bible, not, uh, we don't, I don't like to deal with, with man's knowledge because man's mm -hmm. knowledge has changed when right. they want to. Right. But according to the Bible, all the Jews were black. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we got uh, uh, all the Jews was white, even down to the Messiah. They got him white, got all the Jews white, everybody turned white. Right. But then when you look, <laughs> and when you read the Bible, you find out that it's two races of black people right. on the earth, and it's two races of what we call white people on the earth. Mm. And all you have to do is find the seed, go back into the history book, read the history book, use the Bible for your guide, find the seed, get your world map, and bring people around, put some dots on the map, bring people around, and put them in their land, and you find out that the people that's in the land of Israel today that's calling themselves the Jews are impostors. According to the Bible, Christ is coming to save the Jews out of captivity. The people over there in Israel today is not in captivity, brother. They, they kicking butt. They got a king. Right, they got a king. Let's see. go to the phones. Call right. Go ahead, state your name, please. All right. uh, hi, my name is Reggie. Reggie, go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, um, I, would just like, I would just like to get your personal opinions or views or feelings about Saddam Hussein. You think that he's, um, he's just protecting his people, his people in this country, or he's just a sadistic, psychotic madman? Good thing, good. madman. Good question. Well, look at how long that uh, the world has posed economic sanctions against Iraq. Mm -hmm. And you can very well see, 
that something is, something is strange about that boy. I mean, he's causing all of his people to suffer, and the whole world is talking about how much they're suffering and so forth, simply because look at the wars he's brought to the uh, country. And uh, 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 the people were concerned, the United Nations was con uh, concerned of the tens of thousands of, uh, of innocent people that was going to be killed in this raid here, simply because uh, uh, Saddam Hussein is in power. But the people don't want to put Saddam out of power. They don't want to try to overthrow Saddam. You know why? He has an army to put that, that, that uprising and so forth down. In the United States and Europe will not, they haven't found a faction over there that's strong enough to contend with Saddam Hussein so that they can give them the weaponry and everything that they need in order to, to topple Saddam Hussein. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, the man is in this country, he's running this country, but see, you gotta understand, you gotta go back in history and see who put him in power Right. In, 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 in this country. It was, it, was, it was the Europeans that put him in power in this country as a, uh, to use Iraq as a jump off spot in the Middle East. So Iraq didn't go to it. Iraq went crazy just like Noriega did mm. uh, down in Panama. So what they did was this. The United States courted the Saudis doing our desert, uh, our, our desert shield. That's what it was in the beginning. They courted the Saudis and the Saudis gave them an, uh, an island that they can go ahead and uh, stage their, bring their, their equipment and stage the uh, attack. So the whole thing with Saddam was to have a spot in the Middle East, but Saddam, what Saddam wanted to do, Saddam wanted to raise up Babylon again. Mm. And that old ancient Babylon that was raised up with the Shemites, with the Muslims ruling, it's not gonna happen. The Europeans has to be the final ruler on this earth, and they've been the rulers of this earth for 20, almost 2,520 years, just as prophesied by Daniel. Let's go back to the phone. Call go ahead. State your name, please. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes, yes sir. Yes, State your uh, name, please. My name is uh, Eddie. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know if the um, uh, the Lord, being uh, the high priestess, is priestess. Uh, where would that put, um, with all due respect to the elder uh, priest, where would that put him and his responsibility to um, uh, believers? Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, my title comes from the gifts that he gave the church. He gave some teachers, some preachers, right? Now, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher of the word. Now, the reason why I'm called a priest is because you have to understand the priesthood. The priesthood was given to the house of Levi. But Yahweh said in the law book, say, you shall be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. But we never became a kingdom of priests. So when the Messiah came, he, be he came from the house of Judah. And nothing was spoke of the priesthood pertaining to Judah. But the priesthood, uh, the priesthood was changed so that all of the house of Judah could become priests. This is why he said in Isaiah, you shall be, uh, uh, but you shall be called the priest of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. People shall call you the ministers of our God. Mm -hmm. You see, so what uh, uh, my title uh, as priest is simply because I'm of the house of Judah and the priesthood was changed to include all of the tribes of Israel. So if a brother came out of the tribe of Dan, as long as he had the spirit of the Messiah and was doing the work and he was given a charge uh, uh, by, by the angels of God, then truly he become what? part of the Melchizedek priesthood. Hmm. You see, in other words, it's an unchangeable priesthood that was given by Yahweh to minister to men, and you should know them by their fruits. Uh, in regards to what people think, what you do is this. Find out if the truth is emanating. It's written in here. I don't mean what we think. You know how we do things. We do things word of mouth. Right. If the truth is in this book here, then let's deal with that. He said, you shall know them because they keep my Sabbaths, the priests, uh, 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 lips should keep no, knowledge. Right. The priest's lips should teach the law. And all of these things, we do it in CCI. But when you go to church, you don't hear no law, so you don't have to do that, you see. And everything that the church does today uh, is strictly against what Yahweh wrote down in the law. But man don't want to deal with that. See, what man want to say, well, you see, Paul circumvented everything that Yahweh had to say. A man came along, and it's impossible when you really understand what Paul was talking about. But you will never understand what the people in the New Testament was talking about, not really, until you go back and lay that foundation from Genesis to Revelation to see what Yahweh said to who about what. Let's go back to the phones. Carla, go ahead. And also, let me just mention, uh, Elder mentioned NCCI. 
NCCI is located at 3901A Covington Highway, that's Decatur, Georgia, 30032. And there's a website located at www.thenccicom. The telephone number is 404-286-5869. So if you want to uh, reach uh, us at the congregation, uh, feel free to write or call or either search the web. Uh, let's go back to the phones. Carla, go ahead. State your name, please. Oh, we lost that call? Okay. Let me, uh, 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 let me read this brother here, a piece of scripture out of the book of Revelation, seeing this in the New Testament. In Revelation chapter 5, uh, uh, it was someone sitting on the throne in heaven. God was sitting on the throne in heaven. He had a book in his hand. And no one could look up on that book except the Messiah. You know, we came in, he, he came in and took the book out of his hand and so forth and so on. And let me read you some uh, 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 scripture out of here. I, I uh, want a, a message that was written out of the book of uh, uh, Revelation. Revelation 5 and verse, uh, verse uh, 8, it says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having... He said my idea was idiotic and childish. Jenny, you know that I didn't mean that. Right, you weren't stalling just so she wouldn't get a, her credit check, right? And so they wouldn't find the $265,000 you hid under her name? I, I didn't hide anything. Jenny knew all about this. It was money from her parents' farm. Jenny remembers. Do you, Jenny? You remember? Jenny, speak. Speak what, like a good mutt? What? It's true. You wanted me dead. I never knew about that money. It's not from my parents' farm. He's lying. Everything out of his mouth is a lie. You were going to take that money and leave me. You used it 